Once again, welcome to ITC 1341. This is Competency 2. Uh, this is the first big event in 1345. Uh, and actually, we spent quite a bit of time. Actually, of all the competencies that we will do, this is the one that we're going to invest a lot of resources, a lot of time to get done. Because this sets the foundation for everything that's going to happen. And you have to have a very, very strong foundation. Now, remember I told you that uh, uh, in, in one of the other ones where you have, uh, you, you're going to export and you're going to have some mechanism that's going to hold the data. So you have data. Okay, so you're going to have a query and then you're going to hold the data. Now, what chapters 1, 2, and 3 talks about is the mechanism, the structure that will hold the data, all right? Now, if you remember back in that uh, payroll scenario, I listed about 110 different items that we we're gonna have to track. All right, well, okay. So now what we have to look at is the type of placeholders that we're gonna have to consider to hold this information. So the chapter uh, one talks about how you develop this mechanism that's going to capture this information. Now, it also talks about some of the theories of, uh, of PL SQL. Now, those of you who are familiar with SQL, you know, you know that, that it's kind of not that user-friendly because uh, every time you want to do something, you have to type something in. Uh, you cannot really call a program to do the work for you. You know, every time you do it, you have to sit there and hit the keyboard to make it work because it's really, it's not that user-friendly. Usually what you wind up do, doing is saving all your code in Notepad and then copy-paste from Notepad into SQL to make it work. Well, what PL SQL does, it allows you to take that code and store it as a program that you can give a name to. So part of the mechanisms in chapter one, two, and three is one, to develop an idea that you're gonna create a program, you're gonna give it a name, and you're gonna store it, and you're gonna call that program back to do some work. Now, uh, in that process, uh, there are, is also uh, like on the fly mechanism where you really don't have to give it a name. You just create it, and that's called an anonymous block. So we're gonna look at a structure that holds the data. Now, when I, when, when I talk to you about the data, there is a fundamental building structure that is used in PL SQL, and it is called a block, okay? Now, within this block, that is how everything happens. So when I told you you have to develop a structure to hold the data, the block is that structure. Within that block, you have what they call the declare section, you have the begin, you have the exception, and you have the end. Now, if you, if you remember in that intro video, I told you the exception is that item where you find, you trap things, you capture things that are outside the norm of what you're looking for. Not, it could be a mistake, or it could be an issue where it's really not what you're looking for. Now, in the declare section, this is where you have to develop the placeholders that are going to hold the data. So you run the data, and you have to hold it here. Now, once you hold the data, you have to process that data through some event. And this is where the event is. So this is where the event is that happens that will do the work. But this is the placeholders that are going to hold the information. Now, I told you that you needed to, do, you needed to know select, from, and where. Okay, so this is your standard SQL scenario, select, from, where. So this is where you put the select from where you put the select from where and here. Now this will extract the data. This is the placeholders. And then within this process is where the work is actually done. And then when you get through, you exit and then you end. So the block structure is the core of everything that we're going to be working with. Now that's it. Let's get back to the placeholders. Uh, when we were learning languages, when you were learning English, uh, do you guys remember 
big, bigger, and biggest. That was the progression on precision. Okay? So you had progression on precision. Big, bigger, biggest. Okay? And then, <laughs> and then you wind up with good, better, and best. Which is a little kind of, you know, out of the norm because here you had the ER, here you had the EST to show the increase in precision. And then you go with good, better, best, which kind of violates the idea of increasing precision. Well, those idiosyncrasies are common to all languages and no different is, is something that we have to learn with when we're working with all the precision and the variables that we have to deal with. Now, uh, the other thing that we have to look at is when you have a, over here in the database, when you have a table, the data is stored in some order. So you have, you have, you have some kind of order or you have some kind of index that data is, is used. So when you extract a whole bunch of data into the PLSQL side, uh, how are you going to organize it on the PLSQL side? Remember I told you that you have to create a mirror image of the database in, in the intro part of it? So if you have to create a mirror image, you also have to create a mirror structure that will also organize the information after, it is, after you extract that information. So the structure that is used in, on the database side, we call it an index. On the PL SQL site, we call it collection. So you have a similar concept as indexing. It's called collection on the PL SQL side. And then that collection is how you organize the information that you have extracted. Now, once again, when you extract a lot of data, you need a big place to hold it. Now, uh, on the database side, we know it's called a table. Well, Hmm. You also need a mechanism that will mimic a record from the database side into PL SQL. You will also have a structure, just like you have one record, over here you have a table with multiple records, you have to develop a placeholder mechanism that will hold a bunch of records in a virtual type table mechanism. Now, as we're doing this, understanding that you also have to develop indexing. So if you can extract 100 records and you're going to, you're going to have to hold 100 records over here, you're going to have to sequence all those items. So we have a sequence generator that we're going to have to consider. So competency one, I'm sorry, competency two, chapters one, two, and three speaks to the idea where you're going to store information, one, once you store it, you have to develop a structure, which is the block. Now, when you're going to process data, you have to develop the structure and the placeholders and the precision. Now, in PLSQL, this concept of precision is called scalar. So when you look at a scalar event, you're looking at the idea of developing a mechanism that has levels of precision. Now, uh, well, actually, to kind of wrap this thing up for chapters 1, 2, and 3, what we're looking at is, one, the block structure. That is critical. Two, two, the variables that are going to hold that. And three, the definitions that are given to the variables that are going to be held in that block structure. And that concludes competency two.